It is so much going on, but I ain't got nothing to do with it. It's a whole lot, a whole lot of going on. It's a whole lot, a lot of going on. It's a whole lot, a whole lot of going on. It's a whole lot, a lot of going on. It's, a whole lot, a lot of going on. it's Monday, and you know what that means. If it ain't about me, then I'm a kiki. First on the dock, and then I'ma talk shit. Got my sugar, honey, iced tea. Do you wanna sip now? Period. I said what I said. Now move along, bitch, before you get red. P.O.P. You can't stick with me. Come on, girls, let's get. A lot of going on. There's a whole lot, a lot of going on. There's a whole lot, a whole lot of going on. There's a whole lot, a lot of going on. Hey creeps, and welcome back to Messy Monday. As you already know, you can't sit with me unless you are P.O.P. And that is pretty on purpose. How you doing? Now, before I start, what I need you to do is to go hit that like button. I need 10,000 likes. If we can easily get 200K, 300K views, Stop and hit that like button for me, please. And thank you. And then go in the comments and say, hey, friend, can we get at least 2,000 comments and 10,000 likes? Let's do that. For me, I come on here every Monday. All I ask y'all to do is just engage with me. Period. Oh, and what did you do, friend? You made it to another week. Like I always say, shout out to you for making it through another week. We've had so much going on from this presidential debate, from attempted assassinations, to just everything from illnesses, to sickness, to depression. Whatever is going on in 2024 is going on. But my friend, you made it. And I'm so proud of you for sticking it out, okay? I love you so much. Thank y'all for coming here every Monday to watch me and act up with me and kiki and gossip and if it ain't about me, let's kiki. Period. I love y'all, okay? Now, let me give a shout out to my friend and that is Deontay. Hey, bitch. Okay, Deontay, I see you a barb. That's what's up, bitch. Shout out to you for being the first to comment on my Twitter post. You have my post notifications on, and I greatly appreciate that. It lets me know that you want to see what the hell I got to talk about and what the fuck I got to say. So thank you, child. Y'all go over, like his post, retweet his post, follow him because he is a barb. Um, you know, connect with each other, whatever the case may be, because we are a Zonavi, and what a Zonavi does is we stick together because we are very strong. All right, you guys, I love you. Thank you, Deontay, and bitch, you is now my friend. Hey, bitch. All right, let's go on again to y'all's favorite part, and that is the shit, the sugar, honey, iced tea, because you girls love staying in some shit. First for the sugar, honey, iced tea, we have Lil Reese. Now, when they posted this, I said, oh, my God. No, the Grim Reaper ain't dead. He be the one killing everybody. No tea, no shade. But I was like, what's going on? Girl, come to find out. Her on the curb is they said the Chicago rapper was arrested on Sunday for allegedly raping in Los Angeles. Now, don't get me to lie. I, I don't know. I ain't got nothing to do with this. This is what the streets are saying. So don't shoot the messenger. Literally. Now, what made it a key key is boosted with... Boosie was a reporter. Hey, I'm at the hotel downtown. They just took Lil Reese to jail. He came out handcuffed. They had all his bags. So if anybody Lil Reese people, y'all need to check on him. They just took him to jail. Uh, some dude came down, say some woman say lied on him or some shit. So. Now how the hell Boosie get there? I don't know. Boosie just be everywhere. Boosie be on every type of rendezvous and in the right spot at the right time to get the right information. Now, Boosie know he messy, cause Boosie ain't nobody know shit if you wouldn't have said nothing. But for you to come out <laughs> and tell that man, T, Boosie, you messed the girl. Any got any people, any Re Lil Reese people, the Grim Reaper people, they just took him to jail downtown LA and put him in a car. Y'all need to tap in with y'all people. Now, Boosie, I know people love you and you know that everybody uncle, whatever the case may be, but you wrong for that. You said go check on the ground. <laughs> You said the Grim Reaper family go check on your Grim Reaper when really they need to be go checking on that girl because allegedly now, if they did go out to eat, whatever the case may be, and she went back up to his room, she is not obligated to 
give that man any type of cool cool. She ain't gotta do that. Now you got some folks on the side saying, well, she should've went up to the room. Okay, the fuck? You went on a date, you can go to the room. And yeah, you might have had your intentions that you did want to fuck, but then when you get in the room, you might change it. Like, oh, the room dirty. His balls a little musty. I don't think I want to do this no more. So when somebody say no, no means no. I don't give a fuck if she promised you sex when you got to the room. I don't give a fuck if y'all was kissing and then all of a sudden now she say no, no means no. No. So they said the girl allegedly ran up down the steps and whoop, 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 and girl, it is what it is, child. I don't know. These men just be so horny. Go jack your little penis and go to bed. What's wrong with y'all? Y'all just, you want to throw yourself on people that little weak ass five minute hump and pump dick. Don't nobody want that all the time. Ain't this the same man that shit it or pissed on himself when them people beat him up? I don't want to have sex with him either. But you know, I don't know, whatever, just another man, I don't know. Whatever. Well, that can't hush, cause child, I love Chicago and I wanna be able to step foot in Chicago and I know what the Grand Reaper is capable of. So I'ma just keep this real cute and cordial and honey, just know, know me, no. <laughs> and it is what it is. If it ain't about me, everybody don't want y'all little pee pee. Next case. Next for the sugar honey ice tea, we have Bad Baby. Now child, I, I, I wanna say what I wanna say. Cause y'all know I can get real down and real dirty, but because this is a sensitive topic and a lot of women go through this, I'ma tread lightly. So Bad Baby recently posted that, you know, her and her man had a little altercation and you know, some things happened. I'm not gonna show the picture cause we saw it last week. Eyes was messed up, you know, it was really graphic. And a lot of people were actually on her side. You had some people talking shit, whatever the case may be. After she told on the man, she posted that. Now remember, that's when everybody started flipping the script. Like, oh girl, okay, you going bad. Because when you can say, I love that man more than I love myself, then girl, we already know. Especially when you got a child involved. No, you need to love your child and then love yourself. And before all that, love God. And you can't even love God and your child if you don't even love yourself. Because you already put the man before you put him before that man out. So, when we got there, we already knew what the fuck was going on. And then when you start making up excuses like, oh, well, this doesn't usually happen to this extreme. I don't give a fuck. You already said it happened. So guess what? It's going to keep escalating. And now that you showed him he can get away with doing it like this, now he's definitely going to do it. And the fact that you came and you bought it public thinking it was going to scare him to get his act together, you low-key made it worse because now he's like, oh, you want to take that shit to the public? I'll fuck you up even more if you do that bullshit again. Girl, you better protect yourself. That's what you need to do. And protecting yourself is getting away. But what has happened is you overlooked and you forgave him for the little minor, to you, minor issues to now where it escalated, allowed a baby to form. Now you're stuck because you have that baby, you have that bond, and you have that connection that you think you have. So now it's harder for you to get away when you should have got away that first time. So I know people are gonna be like, well, Zoe, you don't understand, you've never been in a domestic violence relationship. I hate when people say that I've never been in one because I'm not gonna allow nobody to put their hands on me one time. Because when you allow it one time, there's gonna be another time, there's gonna be a third time, and then before you know it, you're stuck because you love that person you think you hush, Zoe. And then I kept reading, it said, and, and making this post, there was no point in attacking him. So it's like you're, you wanna protect him and his image, but did he protect you? Look at your face. He didn't give a fuck about your face. He didn't give a fuck about you and that baby, but oh, I, it wasn't to this extreme ever. Oh, I, um, this wasn't to attack him. Everything's about him, 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 him. That's how we knew you were going Bad. And then this person said, if you care, you will leave that man because he'll abuse you in front of her. And that's what Bad Baby said. Well, who said I'm going bad? And then guess the fuck what? I'ma tell him I can't be without you. Ladies, that is why people do not take domestic violence serious. You go out and you give that cry for help. And then when you get that cry for help and people are standing behind you, people are loving you, People are there for you. You go back. That's why cops don't come running and, and taking the men to jail and leaving them in there until it's too late. Leave at 
the beginning, ladies. Leave at the beginning. And then you go out and you're in public like this man didn't just do this to you. Have a good day. All right, can we get one more wave? <laughs> All right, where's the baby at? Are y'all having date night? Where's the baby? She's so cute. She's at home. Like I said, people, at the end of the day, I can't, I can't say you can't help, but it's hard to help somebody in a dom domestic violence relationship. It's just, it really has to be them wanting to leave when they've gotten that deep. There's nothing you can say. There's nothing you can do. There's nothing you can show. There's nothing. And today, have had enough, and hopefully, it's not too late. And that is why I say it all the time. Love, 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 love yourself. Because if you don't love yourself, then nobody else can love you. I'm going to say it until I can't say it anymore. All right. Well, she's back. And this time, if it happens, she probably won't come to social media. So keep her in your prayers. I hope she's safe. And it is what it is. If it ain't about me, ladies, run. So you can be free. Next case. Next for the sugar honey iced tea, we have Callie. Now, this ain't messy. This is just us being messy. So Callie came out and she showed everybody that you know she's pregnant, whatever the case may be. She's expecting a child. So congratulations to her. She looks so beautiful. But we all want to know who the baby daddy. Because I don't think we've seen her with nobody. Now, all of us know she used to talk to you. You know what I'm saying? We like, oh, dude, probably sliding down the wall like a woman in the movie who got cheated on by her husband and she in the shower just upset crying. I don't know. I actually think Duke is doing just fine. Duke, hey. So the girls went running around the curb. They was looking, trying to see who the fuck this girl baby daddy is. A child is supposed to be him. This um, this is an NFL player who worked for the who played for the Chiefs. He had some. So I don't know, y'all get the dig and let me know if this is real. Cause the right now it's allegedly, so I don't know, but I mean, I can see it. All right, if it ain't about me, Cal, if it ain't have a uh, baby. Next case. Next for the Chicago Honey Ice Tea, we have Cash Doll and Trey T. Now, as y'all know, Cash Doll has had her second baby by him, whatever the case may be. And we thought that it was, you know, all lovey-dovey and doves in paradise, but it's not. So Cash Doll had did a post and delete, and what it said was, single. And I don't give a fuck about y'all saying I have two kids about him, I'm just a baby mama, blah, blah, blah. I'm not dealing with anything just to keep my family together. Now to me, when I saw that, that gave me, I'm mad at him, fuck you, you didn't want to answer to me, talk on the phone, reply to what I had to say, so you know what, fuck you, we done. And you just acted out of emotions. That's what that gave me. It didn't give anything else like she was seriously done. It just gave me temper tantrum. And I love me some cash doll. But I know a temper tantrum when I see one. And, and I'm feeling it was an issue that they done discussed before and he ain't changed. Damn, you talking about keep your head up. <laughs> man, what the f you think wrong with me, man? <laughs> I'm okay, man. Now, sir, if you really want to be clear, you outside walking around in circles. Walk around in circles. You ain't good, baby. <laughs> You're not good. You didn't think she would take it to this extreme, so now you embarrassed. So that's why people tell you to keep your head up because what you're not gonna do is find somebody like Cash. And, and I don't know why it's so hard for you men to show that you're not okay in a breakup. Because if you love somebody and you had sexual relations with somebody and then somebody had your children, you obviously cared about this person. So to act like you just don't care is the reason why she posted what she posted on her Instagram story because you acting like you don't care. Stop trying to hide y'all feelings with people. Let the pride go. And if you fuck up in a relationship, just say I fucked up. Like y'all men gotta stop thinking it's cool to have these broken homes. If the woman is showing you that something is bothering her, fix it. And women, if the man is showing you that something is bothering him, fix it. Y'all too comfortable with these broken homes for me. So I guess people were talking about it in the blogs or even to her personally or in the comments under her pictures. And Cash comes out and she says this. I'm mad about my breakup more than me. Why do y'all keep coming on here and talking about y'all sorry for my breakup? Leave me alone. Now Cash, I fuck with you, girl, but we wouldn't have known about the breakup if you wouldn't have brought it to us. 
So yes, we gonna have our opinions. Yes, we gonna voice it, cause that's what social media is. It is a place of just a big bowl of mess and drama and bullshit. And if you don't want the drama and bullshit, don't post it. So what if I was lying? What if I was lying about what I post? What if I was lying and y'all just took it and ran with it? Cause y'all are so happy to hear some bad news. And girl, don't try to go fix it and say, what if you was lying? So if you gonna stay, friend, you gonna stay. Just to just say you was pissed. He made you mad and you reacted, friend. I feel like as women, y'all should just, we should put ourselves first anyway. And that ain't got nothing to do with just men. It's just period. We bring so much to the table. It's just. I want to do, do y'all, can I ask them like, do y'all believe in God? Hello, Jesus Christ. I don't think a lot of y'all believe in God. That's why y'all move and be so fucking cruel to people. Y'all need to start believing in God. Go talk to him. Go sit down. Go, go get on your knees and pray. Anyway, just stop having these people babies if y'all don't really want to be with these people. Just, why can't y'all just fuck and let it be that? I don't know. But anyway, I feel she's just a little embarrassed because she is a mother of two and now you're going to be single. But um, I feel like it was just an argument. That's all it was. She reacted a certain way. They gonna end up fixing it. She's a Pisces. They be real bipolar, girl. They gonna be back together in three to five business days. She's just real mad about something. So let's just let it go and leave it alone. And it is what it is. But please, y'all, stop thinking that children are less than a marriage. A marriage, you can get married to somebody and not have children and just go get a divorce paper and y'all are gone. But when you have that baby, that is a commitment to that person for life. I don't give a damn if you move on 20 years later and your baby turn up in 18 and child support is done, you're still connected to that person for life. That is something serious. Y'all stop thinking that just having babies is just having babies. Even if you do want it just for you and you want a child, it's serious. A baby is serious. And if it ain't about me, let's keep keep next case. All right, you guys, that is all I got for the sugar honey iced tea. I know we're moving a little fast, but this week there really wasn't a lot of mess. It's just been a bunch of president debate stuff. So I'm actually good because we could just move on through this, okay? Let's go on and get into this mess. First of the docket, we have Dove and Brittany. Now, as y'all know, Dove and Brittany have been separated. They got a child, whatever the case may be. Everybody thought they was just living their life single. Woo, woo, woo. Well, child, Dove had ended up going on a vacation to Cabo with his family. And this video surfaced and everybody was like, wait a minute, what is going on? When this happened, when you get this girl? <laughs> Now, Dub said he wasn't angry about the video surfacing. A bunch of couples here. I'm like, bro, I'm not gonna be lonely by myself. You know what I'm saying? I don't wanna be lonely. I don't want to be by myself, bro. I don't wanna be like one of these old dads. I ain't trying to be like your dad that never recovered. I don't wanna be like your uncle that never recovered. Get the drinking in because they missed a woman. No, bro, go move on. There's a million people in the world, bro. And you don't have to end things with somebody spiteful. So, uh, me and, and Brittany are fine, but just because something didn't work with somebody else, that do not mean lonely. Be lonely. Never going to choose to be lonely, bro. Um, at all. You know what I'm saying? I feel like I have a lot to talk about, and I need to talk about that with somebody. But if you've seen the video, that video is old. Like, I, don't need, I, I look 20 in these videos. Like, if you see this picture, I look hella hella young if you've seen it i don't want to put light to it or if you've seen it but that thing is because as i feel like once you don't know something about once you don't know anything about somebody it makes the relationship better me for example i'm giving some people advice if you like a girl and y'all kicking it don't follow them on social media this girl that y'all see on there i have, i know i know none of her social medias because i don't you know what i'm saying like it doesn't matter all i'm saying is is like uh that video is old it's not like new it's not like yesterday it's not like last month it's not the other month but like i said i do have a personal life i do put y'all in my personal life but i do have another life but y'all don't know anything about my private life and i think we don't keep it like that and when it gets exposed it's kind of better like i said i'm not angry or anything i'm not mad at anybody for exposing that 
I'm enjoying my uh, Mexico trip, and I choose company over being alone, bro. I choose it any day. I choose it any day. A lot of people, y'all gonna have y'all opinions, and I want y'all to have y'all opinions. Um, one thing I do want to say is, before you make that opinion, is is that me and Brittany are great friends, and me and Brittany are a partner, partners to a great, great kid. He knows that, she knows that, I know that, and but me and her still have to live our private lives. Now, if y'all end up getting, you know, seeing a little private stuff, then it's cool. Now, child, a lot of folks is spooked because they like, okay, first of all, he never showed Britney this type of affection, this type of lovey-dovey bullshit that he showed this new girl, and they really upset with the mama and the sisters and them, whatever, because they like, girl, they really like Britney anyway. They was giving her hell and all that, but now y'all all over this girl. You know what I'm saying? They like, what's he, what's going on? But they say that this new woman better watch out because they, you know, they was all in Britney phase too, but now they in your phase. But you know, when you dating somebody, the family gonna like who you with regardless and not your ex. But they said they definitely like her. I don't know, don't get me to lie. Okay, well, child, Britney did a Q&A. People were asking her how did she feel about the video and this is what she had to say. Are you okay with Dub bringing around another female already or you actually don't care? I can't stop anything a grown man does. I can't stop anything any grown person does. Just like a grown person couldn't stop nothing that I do. So to answer the question, no. I don't care if Dejan brings around another female. I have no problem with that. I have no problem with her. As long as my son is getting treated right, we good. Once something go wrong with that little boy in there, we got a problem. Now, to me, you gotta remember, they were high school lovers. And you know, back in high school, you think this person might be the love of your life. And being in a monogamous relationship is tough. It's hard work and everybody can't do it. And some people do grow out of love. Or you know, people are changing every day. We're becoming a new person. We're learning something new. We're we're learning new things that we do and don't like. And maybe they just grew out of loving each other. So, I don't think it was hard for me to come back in a relationship because I wasn't in love. I just was comfortable. I wasn't in love with Deja anymore. I was just, it was just the history basically that kept me from leaving and then me wanting my son to grow up in a two-parent household. But that's why it wasn't hard. So, to answer your question, that's the answer. So it wasn't hard, it was just get out the house. If I was in the house, when we first broke up, if I was in the house, I was sitting thinking about it. I'm not even gonna purpose to y'all. But I just told myself like, just leave the house, leave the house, leave the house. So now that I'm able to sit in the house and I think about it, cool. And as y'all heard, Brittany said, it wasn't hard for her to leave and move on now because she wasn't in love anymore. When a person clocks out and they're not there anymore, you will just deal. You're just comfortable because this is all you know. All I know is to just wake up and be with you. Then it was time for them to go. So let him be with somebody who he wants to do that with, you know? And like he said, he don't like to be lonely. So that new girl might want to watch out. Are you just being with me because you don't want to be by yourself? Sometimes people will be with you because they don't want to be lonely. Then they stop doing some of the things they were doing and now you gonna leave, so then he don't wanna be lonely again, then he gonna go to somebody else just because he don't wanna be lonely. Sometimes it's okay to be alone, to learn yourself, to figure out who you are. So now when you get in a relationship with somebody, you know how to do and adapt to things because you know how to be alone. So now you're not just depending on somebody to be there because you're lonely. Ooh, ah, you broken people. This why I be saying no broken homes and this is that. So you can learn how to love from a family that really love each other, who's been there for each other, who's gonna teach you how to fight and stay together. That's why it's good to have a mama and a dad and a home. Just two people who love each other. Just da -da 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 -da. are just two loving people who love each other. <sighs> if it ain't about me. Let's kick in next game. Next on the ducket, we have Jado versus Damari and Nunu. Now, as y'all know, Damari has been out of the scene for a minute, but he's now coming back into social media because there was a supporter that had saw him in Atlanta. He was roaming around. It looked like he may have had, you know, 
defecating himself or whatever the case may be. I don't know what it was, but it was something on the back of his pants and he was looking real discombobulated. And this is what it looked like. You okay, Jamar? Yes, sir. Ain't you an influencer? Yes. What's wrong? I'm, I don't know who to trust in life. Like, that's all. That's, and I look at on my own here to trust myself sometimes, but like, I don't know what God and his prayers were. Just walk out of the door. Now, why a supporter would record that and post it, I don't know. That's real fucked up on their part. But, you know, that's how this world is, and it is what it is. So then, Jano goes up under, and he responds with some laugh emojis. Now, Jano, I ain't the one to gossip, but the girls in the curb said, now I don't even know why you laughing when you was in the shower. Oh! I love it so they know, but this is what they said. They said when you was in the shower, your drawers was on the floor, and you had doodle streaks in your drawers. Now, you wasn't even high and had doodle streaks, but he had, and he got doodle streaks. So why would you even be laughing at somebody with doodle streaks when you did? I don't know. So after they were saying all of that, Nunu then saw Jano's coming and Nunu went up on it and said, I don't even know why you laughed at the situation because when you was in a vulnerable state of your life, you came to me and been about a lot of stuff and I know some things on you that you told me that I could tell some folks so you might want to watch yourself. And Nunu also said, Jano, I don't know why you're trying to act like Damari is your op because he's not. He's just a man that broke your faith and you went to court, you read it and things like that. So child, I don't know. What I'm getting is the way Damari was introduced to all this stuff is they had these shrooms and got them from Debo. Allegedly is what I'm hearing. This is a while back. And you know, y'all gotta understand there's different types of shrooms out there. You got psychedelic shrooms, you got all these other types of shrooms and maybe that boy was just high as fuck and you really weren't laced, you was just fucked up. It was Debo that introduced him to the drugs, candy. It was Debo that introduced him to the candy. Debo didn't mean it in that way though. He was having some of it, and Damari wanted some. So Damari took seven to eight of them and said, oh, Strong's don't do nothing to me, I can do this. Da -da -da -da. I can do this, that, that, and the third, shaking it like a champ. They told him he needed to calm down. He said, no, I don't need to do nothing. Da -da 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 -da. Okay, cool. Damari started tweaking. Once he started tweaking, he ended up punching Trey in the lid, ended up beating Trey up. In the midst of all of that, when he got on the train tracks and he started tweaking, Lena tried to help him. And guess what he did when the boys left out? Just guess. He strangled Benet. When I said, what? After the hell he just put that girl through? Yes, he did. Yes, he did. Yes, he did. You really get laced in jail. Laced in jail? I or think I got laced out of jail. You got laced somewhere and it had something to do with jail. Yeah, and then I went to jail right after that. <laughs> That's the crazy part about it. Wait, so how did you get laced? Huh? How did you get laced? Uh, I was with my friends and shit, and then we just all ate some, and then I just got the wrong end of it, I guess. I ate too much. What was, what, what, what did y'all eat? Mushrooms. And they, so, basically, somebody, like, whoever y'all got the sh from, it was laced. No, I don't think it was whoever I got. So, honey, I don't know what's going on. Y'all kids just need to stop trying to bottle up y'all's feeling and putting a band-aid on them with drugs and weed and alcohol and stuff like that because at the end of the day the stuff is still going to be there and these things cause anxiety and depression what you have to do is face your problems head on and get through them not trying to cover them so this is a whole lot of, whole lot of going on mm. This is a whole lot of side. I guess we're gonna have to see if um Nunu gonna spin the block because he did also say he gonna spin that block for um Damari. Ooh, oh, so is Jano and Nunu gonna fight? <sighs> All right. Well, if it ain't about me, let's keep in this case. Next to the docket, we have Corey and Maggie versus Corey. 
Now, we've been talking about this. Hopefully, it's starting to wind down, whatever the case may be. So, y'all know Corey ended up dropping him what was like a two hour long response to Carmen's song, whatever the case may be. During the video, Corey really didn't tell us anything new. It's stuff we already knew. The most receipts he did have was the ones with Michi that we've already seen. You know what I'm saying? So that was nothing new. Um, he never really addressed the situation about the abuse. He just said they were fighting each other. The other allegations that Carmen put on him, he never really addressed. He started, but then he had stopped and go something else. You sit here and you say Boosie was living with y'all for a moment, but where's Boosie? Why Boosie ain't saying nothing? You know what I'm saying? It's always you have these receipts and these things, but we never see anything new. There was all these cameras in the house. Where's the footage from the cameras? You know what I'm saying? It's just, it's always something, but it's not everything from Corey. So, I don't know. Whatever the case may be, it's shit we've already seen and heard. So, Carmen drops her second half where she was sitting down with, I think, a person named Kat, whatever the case may be, um, discussing her immigration and everything else with lawyers and all this stuff that Corey was trying to hold over her head. What happened with the lawyer situation, girl? Because they keep on calling me, telling me your paperwork is ready and that you good to go, girl. <laughs> nah, I talked to them already. They said I got proof. When we called that lawyer afterwards, what's going on with her paperwork? We sick of this being held over her head. Y'all got paid, blah, blah, blah. And they said that Corey wasn't responsible to the emails they would not proceed without him doing whatever and he never would do it so that was the whole process of your paperwork because people think when you're married you're already considered like it illegally here but there's a process you have to go through we called the lawyer and was like hey do she need to hide out hey do she need to uh, do she need to take the baby somewhere hey and the lawyer said no nah, she don't need to do all of that she good she yeah. can legally be here because she's in the process i don't know you guys we gonna see what happens hopefully this works out for her so now that this won't be held over her head um and then maddie comes out and maddie wants to sit here and she says this you know you know that me getting out the car open door for you is so extra you can open the door to get out now i can open it for you when you get in anywho <laughs> i do believe that you teach a man how to treat you the reason why i say that is because different men come from different backgrounds for one but two, different men deal, deal with different type of women. They don't make another woman less mm -hmm. than the other, but different women require different shit. In his past, according to him, he's not used to having to do certain things mm -hmm. that I require of him. And that's what I mean by like, if I was raised a certain way, like my daddy opens all my doors, my daddy carries all my bags, my daddy touches every bill. Like, that's principles that I was raised on. I have a father in my life. I had my father my whole life. I'm a daddy's girl, like, as y'all can see. So, with that being said, I'm not finna date a man. My dad always said, if he can't treat you better than me, then it's a waste of time. And so, that's how I see it. Like, I'm like the girl that likes inside of the sidewalk. I like, I like roses every single week. All things that CJ is required to do because that's the standard that I set. Maddie. That's great. Y'all have known each other for how long? And y'all already getting tattoos of each other? This already seems like it's not going to move right. I mean, I don't know. I and mean, you say your daddy taught you all this stuff, but everything you doing right now is opposite of what your daddy taught you. You know what I'm saying? Like, you're getting a tattoo, don't even know the man. They say that allegedly you might be pregnant. Hopefully this man ain't moved in with you, because why you moving in this man? But shouldn't you be moving in with the man? Or just something coming at it together as a t no. Girl, it just seems like you doing damage control for Corey. Like, I see, we see all the videos, you know, you showing him cooking for you, he's opening the door. Are you trying to rebrand him to make people see like, oh, maybe you are the woman that's gonna change him as a man? Girl, nah, I don't care what nobody said, you can't change a man. A man gonna change when he wanna change. He just sat there and told you, you could've opened the door yourself and he, he was giggling and smiling, but you still had let me hush. All right. Y'all tell me what you think, what you feel in the comments. If it ain't about me, let's get kids. Okay? Next to the docket, we have Lisa and Quan. Now, last week, this took everybody by surprise because Quan ended up going on social media saying he was done. He put on his dead sister and everybody was like, oh, he put on his sister. We know he's serious because he ain't never done that. And just all this other stuff, right? Then he was seen at his mama house, eating there. She was seen at the airport, going back home with the children by herself. Woo, 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 yada, yada, yada. Fast forward. Now they done made a video, they sitting down together, and they had a whole lot, a whole lot, a whole lot of a say. I mean, I decided to take it to social media and uh, say something 
and I had posted that I'm single for life and um, put it on my sister. Um, may God rest my sister's soul. Anyone that knows me, Rissa knows that when I said what I said, I meant it mm -hmm. with everything in me. Like, it was, like I meant that to the core. Like, I meant what I said, and that's why I said it. I wouldn't have said it if I didn't mean it. Mm -hmm. um, but it was just a huge mistake with me uh, bringing it to social media. That was not something that Quan ever said because he was looking for attention or like. This was not something that happened or we did for attention or clout or followers and things of that sort because, you know, like you were saying earlier, there is a lot of people that go to social media with these things and they have these fake storylines and all this type of stuff. Like, Quan would never ever in a million years say something like that unless he felt strongly about it. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like yeah. you said, this was a serious situation. This was not something for, like... Play. This was not like a joke. This was not nothing like that. This is some real life shit that we're going through together, and that's how he felt in the moment, and that's why he said that. Yeah. Um, Quan's obviously not the only person that has to apologize for all this stuff that happened on social media. I also have to, you know, send out an apology in the first place because of all this happening in the first place. Obviously, like that's the main reason why we're even able to sit right here. Um, obviously, I had some apologizing to do to Quan and. He accepted my apology, and that's why we're even able to sit right here. But also to you guys, because um, just because in the moment when everything was happening, you know, a lot of people were having assumptions and stuff like that. And, you know, I ended up responding to someone on Twitter and, like, telling you guys basically or this person to mind their business. And that wasn't right of me, you know what I'm saying? Because at the end of the day, you guys are confused. You guys left out of Luke Kwan. I hadn't spoke about anything yet. Um... So that wasn't right of me to be telling you guys, you know, to mind your business or for me to even have the audacity to be coming off like that when this happened because of something that I lacked and you know what I'm saying? Yeah. You know what I'm trying to say? Like, it, mm. I had no place to be even doing that. I should have never said anything on social media at all. Life or whatever. Like, a lot yeah, of them so. were wondering, like, oh, did we actually break up? Like, can we please let them know, like, what's going on? Because you guys had no uh, idea. So you know I posted that. That's how I felt. Um, I meant it, but in reality, at that time, I had Rissa blocked. No communications. I didn't like. We, we, were we weren't in the yeah. We weren't in the right space to even be around each other. Right. So when I posted that, I meant that, you know. But I realistically, I didn't. You didn't communicate. Have a yeah, we didn't have a conversation. So to break up, you have to have a conversation. There has to be some type of agreement. Like you have to be in agreement that this is what we're gonna do. Mm -hmm. um, there was no conversation. Instead, I I did react immaturely and just you know just said that. Mm -hmm. Although I meant it, I should have you know, but I was just not in the space to even you know talk to her. So. Mm -hmm. um, so technically, no, we didn't break up, but um, I wasn't joking when I said what I said. People were trying to say that my kids weren't my kids. Like somebody tried to say that yeah, like Savior slept, wasn't my kid. They're so, saying I slept with someone else and I got pregnant by someone else. They were most were saying like, oh, the last one isn't yours and stuff like false. that. False, false. No. I'm not even gonna get into that. That's just complete nonsense. Yeah, that's so that's crazy. false. Thing that I. I slept with another man that I, you went through my phone and you saw me talking to another man or something like that. Just uh, all that. That's, I, I'm going to tell you all this. That's false. And if it was that, we wouldn't be sitting here right now. Trust and believe that. Right. So, um, that's not true. It's not true. We decided that we're not going to share what happened. There's no point of sharing what happened. Especially if we're going to decide to move forward. Yeah, we still have to keep some type um, of privacy. We understand it, it went to social media, so we do yeah, have explaining to do, but... We were already kind of screwed life. up with bringing it to social media. Well, place, yeah. I mean, me bringing it to social media in the first place. Because with me or us not really saying anything or saying what happened, 
um, look at all that transpired uh, with the rumors and people making things up. Again, I'm not saying anybody's wrong for doing that. I take I take accountability for that. Um, it was wrong to even bring it to social media, but just seeing how that went, I could imagine if like if we shared More, what happened, yeah, yeah, yeah it would we'll, just be worse. You know what I'm saying? It would just make matters worse. So we would, we decided to keep that private. We're, the reason why we're even able to sit right here is because I had to take accountability for something. I had to apologize to Kwon. He had to accept my apology, and that's why we're even sitting here. You know what I'm saying? Like we said, we're gonna keep some as much privacy as we can at this point like to not share exactly details but i just want you to know that it wasn't something that like it was a serious situation and how he reacted was valid because those were his feelings and he was upset he felt disrespected and you know it's something that i need to moving forward you know work on things with myself as well and be sincere with everything that i'm saying and just show him you know that I'm sorry. Like we said, we're going to be working on things. And I mean, it's going to take some time. Yeah, we might don't need some time. Yeah, we might need some time to, you know, just get back to ourselves. But mm -hmm. once we get to that point, of course, we're going to get back to posting and just being our authentic selves and, right. you know, promote positivity and just being happy. Mm -hmm. And of course, you know, sharing our lives with y'all and making y'all happy also. Um, yeah, you guys know how much Quan and I love each other. Like, I love you. Love you too. So much. And you guys see that. Like, it was never fake. It was never something like, oh, we were just doing this. You know what I'm saying? Um, we've always just shared our genuine selves. So, yeah, that's just what we want to do moving forward as well. Once things, you know, once we're in a better place and all that stuff, like Quan was saying. Mm -hmm. um, but, yeah, that's pretty much the plan. Now, I don't know about y'all, but... Me seeing that, you know, it, it kind of pulled me a little ways when I thought I was like, oh, girl, this was all just for show. But when I sit down and I really get into it, I don't think she cheated physically. But what I do feel is that he caught her entertaining a guy. That's what I feel. That's why it's so simple for him, or not simple, but easy enough for him to sit back down with her, discuss it, and say, let's work on it. I think she have might have got, you know, in relationships you've been with for somebody so long, you get comfortable, and then somebody can inch their way in and start talking to you, and you feel fresh and new again, like, ooh, this person's talking to me, ooh, ooh, yada, yada, and then you end up getting caught. So I think he caught her entertaining somebody, because they don't want to talk about it. Because I don't think he wants to ruin her image. And people don't want to say, oh, you dealing with that, she'll do it again. So they're keeping it private to protect their relationship so they can work on it and not let outside opinions make them choose what they want to do with each other. So that's why he got mad, came on social media, said what he said. Oh, you can do this for somebody. You can do that. You can love them like this, but they don't love you. Because I'm telling you, like he said in that video, if she would have cheated physically, he would not be sitting right there. But I think she was entertaining somebody. And by her entertaining somebody, he's like, damn, I'm giving you all this. I'm doing this. I'm doing that. And that's not enough that you have to go entertain somebody else. That's what I think happen and that's why it's easy enough for him to say you know what well let's work on this let's work on us it's gonna take time because now he has to build the trust back the loyalty you know can i actually deal with this can i really forgive her because yeah and if you look at her she's good she's like yeah we gotta do this you know um he should be the only one that had to apologize because he went you know, um, public with this, but I had to apologize for my things too. And that's why she, I feel he was like, well, nah, you know you fucked up. Why are you telling people start our business on the internet, fussing at fans and stuff when bitch, you really fucked up. So you can't tell folks start your business because you fucked up. How can you say shit? You know what I'm saying? You fucked up. Don't make it like you was this good person. I'm just overreacting for nothing. You gave me a reason to react and that's why I reacted. Period. You, you, you should have just stayed the fuck quiet.
and let me be mad and let the people say what they saying because you fucked up. I think he really don't want to be there. I think she just really cried. Baby, I'm sorry. I'm not going to do it again. Please forgive me. I, oh. And because he genuinely does love her, he's taking her back. But I feel when people do that so soon, you're doing it because you you knew you really still loved that person. But is it what you really want to do? I think they should have I think they should have stayed separate for a second. Just, you know, just to breathe, maybe like a week or two, and then come and have this conversation. Because then once all this settles, is your trust still gonna be there? You know what I'm saying? Are you gonna be walking around saying, what's she doing? What is this? What is that? Oh my god, did that? I don't know, I wish them well. I hope it works the way they want it to work. I'm glad they were mature enough to, you know, try to work on it because that's what relationships are, working on things. Ooh, all right. <laughs> well, tell me what y'all think in the comments. Tell me what you feel. Do you, what you think happened. Woo, woo, woo. Yada, yada, yada. It is what it is. If it ain't about me, then let's get keep it. Okay. All right, you guys, that is all I have for the Messy Monday. Like I always say, send me the mess in my Instagram DM. Send it, send it, send it. Put it in order. Say, this is what happened. This is what's going on. This who said this. This was said that. Put me all the information together because, baby, I don't go looking for it. Okay. Um, I love you guys. Like I always say, God only made one you. If you don't be you, then nobody else will. And until the end, stay messy, and I will see you next Monday. Next game. A whole lot of going on. There's a whole lot, a lot of going on. There's a whole lot, a whole lot of going on. There's a whole lot, a whole lot of going on.